again. So you guys have some, I'm going to start recording again because you guys have good questions. All right, so um, hold on. So asked if there's any uh, other sites that can do a bit more than GitHub pages. Like I know they do static sites, but what about dynamic ones? All right, so yes, you can also do dynamic websites. Not with GitHub pages though. So I've never used it. Um, because I don't know JavaScript yet or, and you know, I'm, I don't have a login page. I don't have all this stuff. Um, we're going to be learning that, um, in the, um, in the, in the JavaScript learning group. But basically if you go to Heroku, um, as you can see here, um, you know, you can have dynamic, uh, this is free Heroku. I'm not sure if it's Heroku.com. Heroku, I don't know. I'm just going to type in Heroku and see what pops up. Yeah, dude, no problem, man. That's why I'm here, man. You know, it's all, it's, it, it's all learning experience, man. And even while I'm here, um, I learned, I learned so much today too. You know, look at this. I have my, I have my, um, my list. I have a list of commands I can use now. So, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to send this list out to all of you so that you guys have, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I, I should make this homework or something so that you guys define these commands. <laughs> so um, let's see. When will the JavaScript uh, class be started? So the JavaScript class will be started the day after tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure if I should. Well, maybe, you know what? Maybe we should just start it tomorrow because I feel like a lot of you uh, have already, um, you know, we, we're, we're ready. I feel like it. So um like if you, th what do you guys think? Do you guys think we should start tomorrow? Do you guys think we should uh, wait another day and just do another Git episode? Um, like I personally would like to get started tomorrow. Um, I was going to say, I think you went through like the 20% of the Git commands that you're always going to use. Yeah, I like agree. 20% of like the command terminals that you're, and it seems like once you, once you do a project or once you have something because um, it's one thing, like, I guess it's tough because cause there's, I'm sure there's a lot of, like, schools of thought where you, like, do it, like, 50 times and that works out. And sometimes that works. But I feel like also, like, what you went through, like, actually building it out on a folder and pushing it to GitHub. Um, and then there's also, like, I'm sure there's also other resources, too, that you can, like, do it uh, in, like, a sandbox area where you're not so paranoid about, like, screwing up your computer, too. So yeah. that always helps more. So I vote for starting JavaScript tomorrow. <laughs> All right. So yeah, dude, I agree. Let's start JavaScript tomorrow. Um, so here's an example of a dynamic. Uh, if you guys know who Wolfie is, um, he's a buddy of mine. He uh, actually created this um, and it's hosted on Heroku. Um, uh, it looks dynamic to me. I, I'm pretty sure it's pretty dynamic. You know, it looks, everything's moving. So, <laughs> you know, I've never created anything like this. It looks friggin' awesome. But, uh, so, so by dy dynamic, do you mean like the ability to use both a back end and front end? So like not only HTML and CSS, but like let's say JavaScript like like Node.js or exactly, exactly, like that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. So Sorry, just want to clarify. <laughs> let's go over dynamic versus static uh, sites right quick. Uh, on Cora. All right, what's the difference between dynamic and static websites? All right, so we have about 91 answers. <laughs> this is why I love Quora. Um, another long answer. Let's go to like a really short answer. All right. Uh, Oh, dynamic is basically like it, it basically it's like html or static is like html and css websites and a dynamic website all right so here we go first of all you have to understand what it does static uh static means the contents of the website are hard-coded fixed at the time of design of, de of designing the page um it can't be changed without updating the page manually for example uh, the site that they provided. Um, and then dynamic means uh, the data of the website are extracting from a database backend, like usernames, emails, personal details, etc. 
for example, Facebook, Twitter are the, uh, the example of a dynamic website. Uh, they manage um, the data from uh, admin panel updates and uh, the database regularly. So I, I think that's a perfect um, uh, definition of a dynamic and static website. Right. So like your portfolio would be a static website because you don't have like you're just when you hit the site, it just shows up and like all the information's there. You're not like right. adding anything to it. And then if you have like a, a site, like a course, and you have to log in and that pulls up information and pulls up specific data that's going to like a database somewhere in a server. Okay. And, then, and then like that's pulling up and then when it gets pulled, it normally gets, you know, special information. So like, hello, Adam or hello, Jonathan or whatever. Right. That makes it dynamic. And you have like a, a visualization of it right here. It's like uh, if you have like an HTML file, uh, it, it'll like get the data from a J, a J, J, uh, it'll, um, have, it'll have like links to a JavaScript file or a CSS file. But uh, with the dynamic site, it'll have like links to a JavaScript and CSS file, but it'll also have a, um, links to a PHP file and a MySQL file. And the MySQL file is basically the database. And uh, PHP is telling um, everything else how to interact with the database. So for example, I click here or I sign in and I enter my, uh, I'll enter my user information. Um, and so basically what it does is when I enter this user in information, um, uh, it'll send the information to, um, the, uh, it'll, it'll check the database, the MySQL database to see if, uh, my ID, uh, which is my email, um, matches and, um, and password match. And, uh, then it'll, uh, it'll, um, use, um, probably like PHP or something to, um, uh, Maybe, um, like tell the 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 database and everything. Tell the site that everything's working correctly and that you know they can access the database, the MySQL database, and that you know they have permission and everything um, like that. Yeah. Yeah, one day uh, I'll, I'll probably go over uh, Heroku a little bit more. Um, but, so I learned it. I'm not going over it. <laughs> There's also uh, Code san Sandbox.io, which is basically like a, it kind of shows you like, it, it's basically like VS Code online. So you can set up like a folder structure. You can set up a front end. You could technically set up a back end. Is that similar to CodePen? Uh, yeah, uh, in the sense that like CodePen just does like straight static, right? So they just do HTML. There's like, so when you pull up a CodePen and you new pen, there's a little box that says HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, Code Sandbox gives you the ability to do, like it, it basically gives you like a VS, um, what looks like VS Code. So you'll oh, okay. Start I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. So, so it's. Yeah, it's like it, but it, 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 so there's a lot more freedom with Code Sandbox than there is with, um, with, with Code Pen, I know. So like if you want to use like Bootstrap, you have to go into the settings of CSS and find uh, the specific CSS file for Bootstrap, or you have to manually do it in. So you're, it's not like, it's not as cool, like it's not as, as not cool, because there should be no difference. But it's not the same feeling as you would do it like when you're doing it on VS Code or Atom or whatever editor. Okay. Yeah, this looks yeah. really interesting. I've never used this. Even yeah, man. Like, it's a, a lot of people that I know uh, on React and like Node.js, they'll use this. And it also can tie to your GitHub account as well. So, whatever you're doing here automatically gets pushed back to your uh, repository, which is really cool. Um, but it was some dude in, I don't know, Denmark, Sweden, somewhere. He made this. Oh, that's nice. It's very nice, actually. Like I, I would think it's all written in React. Um, so you can use React with this? Yeah, no, you can you can basically if you can tie in a library, um, you can tie in any library because it's it's basically uh it's you're you're running VS code over the internet is basically what you're doing. You're running an editor. Um so you can do anything you want. You just have to tie in and they normally have like presets, so they'll have like um the React code that you need. Because they're all like obviously React is not just like some you have to import it in from a JavaScript file, um, React JavaScript file for it to know, but it's pretty easy. 
Okay. That's cool. Um, it's a lot. Like, it's not exactly something for somebody for like the beginning, but once you yeah. get more comfortable, uh, that'll help. Yeah, it looks like it'll help a lot, man. So, um, it, uh, so yeah, you guys can use uh, that uh, code bin, uh, or excuse me, code sandbox.io or uh, Heroku um, for dynamic websites. I didn't know about code uh, sandbox.io. I'm gonna keep this in mind for now. Man. I'm actually gonna bookmark, uh, bookmark it because it looks nice. Yeah, I think you just sign in with your GitHub account and it'll, um, yeah, it's kind of nice. And then, yeah. So yeah, guys, um, that's it. So that's, that's uh, I'm gonna stop recording now. That's uh, that's basically it for uh, today. Uh, I was expecting um, to be going through that for a lot longer. I was expecting a lot more questions, but you guys were kicking butt today, man. And, uh, everybody was following along, did a very well job. Uh, congratulations and. Uh